Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll get these on Rumble real quick. We'll do the kind of speed run here. Uh, second term Reagan doubling down the war on drugs. Uh, these are all from three from Lord of Ree. I'll read these. How can we be sure that second term Trump won't be like second term Reagan? Death sentences for drug dealers, bump stock ban. He still has to earn my vote. And then 14th Amendment equals the state should pay for the defendant's court costs if they win. So thank you for those three, Lord of Ree. I will answer them in a second. And then the last one from Tech Crisis is easy way to start cleaning up the justice system, remove all immunity. Now I do... Yep generally yep. agree with that text crisis. Absolutely. So, Qualified uh, immunity is an absolutely pernicious doctrine. It should never have been allowed to to become a thing in our system. You know, that that that, that should be re- because that is one way you can hold a prosecutor accountable. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's let's transition this because this is a good point to do it which which is mm-hmm. Trump. I want to get your opinion on what's been going on with Trump. Um, you know, what you think, what you hear on the ground. You're in a pretty I would say you're in a pretty conservative area, mm-hmm. oh, right? You know, yeah. and, and certainly yeah. in a red state. And, and I try to keep tuned into that. So I guess first, let's just start about like what your general thoughts are on Trump and his, you know, his kind of shots for 2024, maybe his feuds with DeSantis, uh, just, just generally. Yeah. Um, the nomination is his if he wants it. Um you know, look, I, I'd be perfectly happy with DeSantis. I'd be happy with Trump. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to reward actual performance over theoretical. So I would probably, if I had to choose, I would choose Trump, but I'd be perfectly happy supporting whoever the winner is. And that's the thing, right? I mean, I say this to Republicans all the time, be an advocate for whoever you want to be. I mean, in the primary fight, like, you know, this, this is not, an, this is a man's job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't need we don't need wussy little sissy boys. I mean, so I don't I don't have a problem with them tearing each other's faces off. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't want Lindsey Graham in in the office, you know? You know what? Well, I did say man, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, but the problem is is when I hear people start implying that well, they're not going to vote for the winner of the fight unless it's their guy. And that drives that, me. That, that infuriates me. I mean, I, we, you you you're telling me right now that yeah. you prefer that you are so in the camp of one guy that you're going to say, you know what, Biden is better. Yeah, I don't, that's exactly right, and that's I, ridiculous. I don't, I don't believe that shit. Have you been Have you been awake the last four years? Are you really that? I mean, Look. even if you believe all the, even if you were to believe every nasty thing you were about whether it's Trump or DeSantis, even if you believe all of that still better than what we've gotten for the past now, four years. One of the reasons why I absolutely loathe with every fiber of my being the never Trumpers um, is that I voted for John McCain and Mitt Romney, okay? I, I dutifully trudged down to the voting place and voted for those two jackasses, those two tepid rhino jackasses. You punched the bot. You punched because the, it you was it. the but Because as bad as they were, they were better than the alternative. I, I made I, I made an adult decision, and now I hear from these jokers. I'm going to take my toys home if I don't get my way. Okay, now you know, and of course we're seeing this right. The never Trumpers invariably are actually lefties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That they are. They're Trump all, broke they're them. All, he ripped all their left. masks off. And, and, they're all and, leftists. And, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, they're not. A lot of them aren't even pretending anymore. Of course, the leftists loathe them. Nobody likes a traitor. You know, Benedict Arnold, once he outlived his usefulness to the British, they treated him like like dirt because he was dirt. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, but uh, so uh, Trump, uh, Trump was it was going to be almost impossible to beat Trump in the primaries anyway. This prosecution by Bragg pretty much ended any realistic competitor, in my opinion. My biggest fear is that Trump won't properly report this as an in-kind campaign contribution. Uh, because you know. I, I look, listen, because the, the whole thing about this indictment and with with Bragg here um, is that, you know, people were trying to paint it as if that, uh, you know, as if this was about him giving money to Stormy for them having an no, affair. That's, that's not illegal. That's perfectly legal. You want to hush legal. up your mistress. That, that's that's been that's been baked in on all sides of the political. John line. Edwards. Wanna, John I, Edwards. I lived. I lived actually. Uh, when I was in North Carolina, I was in Western North Carolina. One of his mistresses would come out, his former mistress that he paid would come out to that community. And we all knew where her house was. We all knew where she was. Uh, and everybody knew everybody. It's an open secret. It's something that's been done. Um, this guy years ran on the promise 
to indict Trump. Now, does that sound like a reasoned assessment, uh, an objectively reasonable assessment of the actual legal facts? But, it, but or does that not, sound like? But it's not fair, Ty. He's being he's being unjustly investigated by Jim Jordan. You know, so he's got to he's got to fight back. He's got to sue Jim Jordan because this is unfair. He's been yeah. he's just doing his job here. Wah, wah. Uh, yeah. Well, he obviously rode the short bus you know, in high school. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's the thing, right? I mean, when when even liberal commentators are going, "Oh my God, this is this is this is awful." <laughs> yeah, Dershowitz. I mean, Dershowitz came out and said it. I know that uh, Bolton, even the Never Trump, Bolton was very much in the Never Trump camp. Came out and said it. Um, I, I think that's how you know it's bad. Well, and, um, and unfortunately, I wish I could say that I had any faith in the New York justice system. But very clearly, uh, there's a there there you know there's a dual system of justice in New York State. Yeah. Um, and and by the way, so people are saying, oh, Nick thinks he's fucked if he goes to trial. I think he's fucked if he goes to trial too, just because who the judge who's the fucking judge? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and these are these are political ideologues. This is a this is a Stalinist show trial. Yeah, is what this is. So so yeah, he's fucked at trial. I think he wins on appeal, hands down. Right? Uh, Maybe. And, and, and that well, let me put it this way: It's got to be the, a U.S. Got to get it to the U.S. Supreme Court. You, that's where it's going to go. Yeah, you got you got to get it there because New York Supreme Court didn't work. You know, they're not going to do anything. And that will take longer than the election. Yeah, the appeal process will take longer than the election. So the time, the clock will run on that. Bragg can say he did what he's going to do. They have the headline that they can kind of call Trump a potential criminal, right? They can use that kind of c word during campaigning, um, and it's not necessarily def defamatory um you know they can no, say, but, you, yeah, know, I, you know the party of, of hillary clinton's going to call somebody a criminal <laughs> the, the party of the biden crime syndicate <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like the french calling you arrogant <laughs> you know, or, well, it's a compliment from them i take it as a compliment yeah, i'm like oh yeah, i'm yeah, arrogant. Calling oh, you arrogant okay great arrogant and untrustworthy and duplicitous i mean or, or bill clinton calling you a philanderer it's like what i'm like well i've really done my job well i've well, I've, I've really to, i've really reached peak philandery uh yeah, yeah but i think that you know you asked about desantis i i something is going on there and this was my read when all this stuff started was trump seemed genuinely outraged as though he had been betrayed somehow right okay and we're and we're never going to know exactly what was said between those two guys because there's no you know believe me if, if the if if the texts were there they would have come out by now right but but trump acted as though he had been betrayed by desantis and it's not clear exactly what the betrayal was we can speculate and talk about it but you know let me see here but, yeah yeah if there was video if there was anything if there's proof with um, that it would be out by now yeah, um, you know, but again, there. This is not a job for wussies. I mean, I, I got no problem with with them going at each other. I wish I do think DeSantis has been smarter in the way he's dealt with Trump. Um, right. He, uh, when I'll say one thing about DeSantis is he sure knows how to execute. Um, he, yes. He, that it's a great sign for the future from him. I, but I would love to see those guys kind of bury the hatchet and. You know, because we need both of them. What, what would be wonderful would be if you could get Trump to change his domicile and let DeSantis be his running mate. Wouldn't that be a, a dream? That ticket? that would be a, that would be a great team. Uh, yeah. I actually heard a good theory one of my friends had, which which I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be a funny thing because technically the vice president and president are separate offices. So one yeah. of the things that the the argument here is, what if Mike Pence? just ran for vice president and he just <laughs> campaigned for vice president and he said look and he pitched it this way he said all i'm gonna do is do my job which is to certify the vote and break ties and until then i'm gonna fuck off and go over here and sit on an island and drink so you know, and basically what he did the, the first time <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i'm like i guess like in theory that could work but with the backbiting he's done against trump and from a political standpoint i don't nah, think it's viable he, at all i think it's it would it would be dead in the water but it's a cute it was a cute legal thought like a legal experiment yeah. because we've never had somebody independently run for vice president can you the, do that modern, i mean I've yes never okay you can independently run for vice president. That's a separate office which you are voting for. When you go to the booth, you vote for president and vice president, and right? Vice president. So you could you theoretically could vote for just, Donald Trump as president and somebody. Okay. And 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 somebody else who even wasn't his running mate. Interesting. Right. 
So let's say he picks somebody, you know, as his running mate, he picks Marjorie Taylor Greene, right? Um, somebody could run against that and be the vice president. And they could say, look, I'm just here in case Trump passes away, right? In case, you know, there's a vote that needs to be broken or, or sort of find the election. Um, it'd be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, no question. I think I think Pence pretty well ended his national political aspirations. Um, I mean, look, oh, yeah, how, many, how many times do we have to see this, right? A Republican emulates their career shoots, mm -hmm. blows their own political head off attacking Trump. How many times is going to have to happen before these it's, geniuses it's go? It's TDS. It's TDS. Go. And it's infected into the mainstream. The mainstream mm -hmm. has TDS. Yeah, yeah. And, and and again, kudos to DeSantis because he has not gone after Trump. And I think that's the correct way to go at it. Yeah. Well, Trump, Trump may perceive, him. I'll put it this way. Trump may perceive that he's gone after him. And right. yes, he has made little comments He's here and some there little side shots, in response, nothing... in response to Trump, you know, going out there with yeah. the sanctimonious stuff. Mind you, Trump was the first one to start that shit. Yeah. Right. So, so um, let's put it that way. Let's be very fair about this. But, both it's, sides. but it's very, it's very moderate. Uh, it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's how you would, how you would rib somebody, you know, look, yeah. Nick and I make fun of each other more. Right. right? I make fun of right. Drex for his soft eyes and his foot fetish. Right. We're still friends who go out and we, we you know, we we have a bi-weekly podcast, right? Yeah. You can get, you can yeah. bust somebody's balls. Absolutely. And well, it's still that's hang a out. uniquely guy thing. Um, you can, you know, that's. <laughs> and, and well, this is, but but we've got know. but Ty, we've gotten in this feminized world, right? Where we don't, when we see that, we think it's scary and alien, and it's got to end in in a death match. Um, yeah. It's it's not. This is just what we do. We we essentially bully each other a bit. But what it is is to make sure that your friends are tougher and that resilient. I want to be around tough people. I want to be around people that are going to, when the shit hits the fan, be able to stand up. And that's exactly what I got a super chat here from Mech says. When the shit hits the fan, the Wokesters will be running uh, all mm -hmm. this to find out real soon their bullshit won't fly. And that's the thing. I want to be working with people that when the shit hits the fan, they're not going to blink. They're going to know what they need to do, and they're going to yeah. they're going to hold the fucking line. Yeah. No. Yeah. The wokesters are, are utterly incompetent. Um, it, 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 I wake up every morning going, "Did we actually lose to America's dumbest bartender?" <laughs> <laughs> not the, even bartender, yeah. barista. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the answer is they don't call the Republicans the stupid party for no reason. They're the it's crazy true. party. We're the stupid party. It's it's uh, very very true. Yeah. Um, let me get this. Meta says Jeb Bush backs DeSantis, so does Soros. The uh, question is, does was... DeSantis care? I mean, yeah. Jeb, Jeb, Jeb backs DeSantis because he hates Trump's guts. Yeah. And and anybody can say, yeah. Oh, yeah, I back them, right? You know, so yeah. Yeah. there's no um, I haven't I mean, seen I haven't seen anything from DeSantis to make me think he's a closet liberal. I mean, and I have not seen, by the way, the the Fed you know. has been removing Soros folks in Florida. I just don't buy that narrative that strongly. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I, still don't I mean, buy I, that narrative. Yeah, I've been sold on that one. So I think I think if DeSantis did have a chance of unseating Trump, it's gone now because this prosecution has infuriated oh, yeah. the base, uh, rightly so. Yeah, I think um, Trump wins the Trump wins it. Trump wins yeah. it with hands down. I don't think there's any competition, but at the same time. Uh, look, uh, as a Floridian who was there during COVID, we we remember, right? We yeah. remember when our state was free, when everyone was fleeing there, when people were locked down and having issues around and they were able to come to Florida and kind of live a normal, a relatively normal life in this insane world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, No, I mean, like I said, primaries tear each other. I mean, I voted for Ted Cruz in 2016. You know, I didn't vote for Trump, but there was no scenario on this planet that would have led me to support Hillary Clinton. I mean, I, you, you can't, you can't, you can't pick a Republican yeah. bad enough. Yeah. Let me, let me put I'm this one out too. We got unpermitted concealed carry via DeSantis last week. Don't think too many liberals would sign that. No. Once again, you guys can't just look at the negative stuff, look at issue by issue. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I agree with DeSantis on all issues. There's issues I disagree with them on, but let's go issue by issue and let's stop this God emperor shit. Let's stop this. You know, you've got to be infallible like a pope, right? Uh, Trump right. has flaws. DeSantis has flaws, right? They're different types of flaws, um, but we got to support them on the policies that we want to get through. And that's how you win in America is you are prag you're practical. Uh, you're not 
this idealistic, uh, this idealistic person who needs this perfect shimmering candidate that is flawless, this Messiah like figure. They're not coming. It, no, they, they don't exist. No. <laughs> no. And, 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 you know, and, and of course, a lot of times the flaws that you perceive in someone are also the basis of the things you like about them. You know, is Trump a bit of a drama queen? Absolutely. But Trump's a fighter too. You know, Patton was a drama queen, mm -hmm. but he was one of the most aggressively effective generals in, in world history. You, you know, you, you can't, you can't pull those qualities apart. I, I remember I had any number of conversations with, you know, more mainstream Republican friends. Like, well, I just wish Trump would stop with the tweets. Well, it, it, it's all a package deal with that guy. You right. Know, he's in his late seventies. He ain't gonna change. Um, but the fact is Trump was talking to the American people directly with those tweets. He circumvented the news media and sidelined them. That was brilliant. Whether he knew intellectually what he was doing or not, I think Trump's a very intuitive guy. I think he's one of those guys that kind of just intuitively knows what the most effective thing to do is. DeSantis is much more thoughtful in the way he goes, but he's a fighter too. Um, you know, when, when he shipped those, those immigrants up to Mar Martha's Vineyards. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. <laughs> I could see Trump doing that, but I don't know that Trump's people would have taken the additional step of having every one of them write a handwritten note that they wanted to go and sign it. That was brilliant. That and that's and that's a great part of it because the whole coercion narrative, the force narrative, mm -hmm. that's just totally. It's almost as if DeSantis yeah. people sat and thought, "What are they going to attack us on?" Yep, uh, and that's you know, what you're going to do. How are they going to? Well, let's just set them up. I mean, so I mean, I'll be happy with either candidate myself. Yeah. Um, Let me. I, like I said, I probably will lean towards Trump for emotional reasons, but uh, no, and, yeah. and I would I would say I think he's the natural choice who's going to win. Practically, I think he's going to win. I think he's if this pro if these prosecutions continue to go forward, I think it's a shoe in for him. I think it just kind of tees him up, let him do it, let him run this time out. If he doesn't win, I don't think he goes again. I, no, I think that's I think that's it me. for Trump. I think yeah, too old and too much time and everything else, and people will be just be over it. But um. But I think that, you know, hey, let him do it at this point because